In this video, we're going to discuss refunds when it comes to our vendors. So let's go into accounting and we'll go to vendors and we'll notice that we have our bills, of course, but we also have refunds. We'll look at bills first and then we'll come into our refunds uh, menu item. So there's two types of refunds we might want to make. The first one is going to be a refund where the vendor is going to send us money. And the second one is going to be a credit where we just hold that credit on our uh, partner ledger as something that we can apply to a future bill. So we'll look at both of those examples. So I'll just go into uh, one of these that are already in payment. So we'll look at this $450 here, which is in payment. Whether it's in payment or paid, it doesn't necessarily matter. But here what we're going to do at the top of our screen is that we're going to create a credit note. And we can give this a reason for our credit note. So maybe the items came broken or the items have a defect. Let's just say items came broken. And we'll click on reverse here. What that's going to do is create a new draft reversal for our vendor bill. Now we have all of our items down below, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we need to refund everything. We can delete some line items. We can adjust the quantity. And when we're ready, we can click confirm here. Now what that's going to do is post this journal entry. And you'll see our vendor credit note has a different sequence of our bill. And under our journal items here, we see that we are going to credit our stock in term received and debit our accounts payable. Now this is important here because the system is going to assume that when we remove these items, we're going to remove them out of stock in term received, or rather we're going to credit stock in term received here on this journal entry. And then there's going to be a removal of inventory, typically when we're refunding or sending back these products to our vendor. So if we're sending our items back to our vendor, that's going to create a stock move. And if we're using automated inventory valuation, what that move is going to do is debit our stock in term received and credit our stock valuation. So it's going to assume that you're going to do that action. Now, sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes instead, we might put that in our scrap location. Maybe the vendor says, okay, it's broken. You can just throw it out. So in that case, we're going to move that to our, our scrap location and we might have a different account set on our, on our scrap location. If that's the case, at the end of our um, financial month or quarter, wherever we see fit, we're going to need to move or balance our stock in term received with our scrap location so we can offset what the system is holding in our stock in term received because there's not going to be another journal entries that's going to debit out the stock in term received and we're going to be left with the balance in there. So we need to take care of that. So I just wanted to mention that as a, as a brief note, if we don't refund or rather if we don't return our products that we're creating a credit note for here, then we're going to have to make those entries in the system manually. All right. So the next thing that we might want to do is register a payment here and assume that the, the vendor is paying us for this inventory. So they're going to send us maybe a check um, or a wire for $100 for the discrepancy here. So we'll go ahead and create a payment. Now, in the case where the vendor is not going to send us money, then we would not re we would not register that payment. And instead, we'll use that as a credit note that we can apply to a future bill. So let's take a look at that. We'll go back to our vendors and we'll look at another vendor bill. We'll go to, let's see, one of here. Maybe this, we, we worked on this in payment one for 450, but we'll look at raw material two and we'll create another credit note here. We'll say broken item. And we'll just do raw material two and we'll say two units. So $50. So now I can simply confirm this. And then on a new bill, when the vendor sends us a bill for some other items, either in the past or in the future, here we'll go into one that's not paid. We'll have a reversal of our previous bill that we can apply to this. So we can click on add here, and that's going to reduce our balance by the $50 and make this mark this as a partial payment with a $10 balance due. So that's all you need to know. Um, the last thing I would mention is that in some instances, you may elect to create a vendor refund without attaching it to a previous bill and just writing in the notes. And the reason for that is um, quite involved, but as a brief example, let's say that we say we're, we're not going to actually remove those products from inventory, or maybe we already scrapped those products. Maybe we went back in time and we realized that the vendor 
didn't necessarily send us the, the items that we thought we received and we backtracked them a month later. In that case, we're not going to create a refund or return to the to the vendor. We're not going to do any other accounting moves. So maybe we don't want to apply it directly to a previous credit note. Instead, we might want to just create a new credit note um, and maybe write in the bill reference here saying, or, or log a note in the chatter here, putting the reason for uh, the, the credit note here. And we'll just add a bill date. And we don't necessarily have to put a product here, but we can just put a label and we can put this in an account uh, that we deem necessary. And then we'll be able to use this either to receive a payment in from our vendor, or we can use this as a way to apply this credit note to future bills without necessarily refunding the previous bill. And again, the reason for that is because let's say we're using three-way matching, which we'll cover in our next video. There's going to be um, an expectation that you actually refund or rather, excuse me, return the products that we didn't receive or that came broken so that we can offset those journal items. And if we want to avoid that step, we can just create a vendor credit note that's not attached to the previous bill. So it doesn't mess up any of our uh, matching that we had previously. I hope that all makes sense. That is everything you need to know about our refunds.